Motorola. World's largest exclusive electronic manufacturer presents... are about to see deals with an imaginary H-bomb attack on New York City and with the measures that civil defense would take in such an event for the rescue and protection of the population in and around the city. The happenings that will now follow on your screen might be taking place in a suburban community some 50 miles from New York, but are entirely fictitious, of course. It is the prayer of every one of us that such happenings shall forever remain fictitious. <laughs> hey, kids, if I'm going to drop you off to school, you'd better wiggle. <laughs> the 823 will not wait for me. Oh, must I drink my milk? Make a guess, Jimmy. Michael, you know what I think? I think it's awful. <laughs> oh, Mother. Yes, Bobby. Don't you stop calling me by that baby name. It's Barbara. Well, jeepers, we've been calling you Bobby for 14 years. I don't see no, why you should... No, of course not. You wouldn't. Now, Bob, right. Mommy, will you listen? You know those white jackets I got at the bars and sale for the babysitter's club? They have to be washed and ironed for the night's meeting. Oh, sweetie, on the day the maid's out sick, won't they wait? Well, if you want to make an absolute... Oh, call, why I'll can't we be like other families? A nice, normal group of people. We are, John. Oh, what? Normal. As oatmeal and apple pie. <laughs> Come on, now. Up and out of the house. The jackets will be done. <laughs> Oh, sorry, come on, kids. I'll let you to the The meeting's going to be at 8 o'clock. All right. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Goodbye, darling. The meeting should be over by Hurry up, kids. I'll tell you all this. You're welcome to come home at the end of the day, every one of you. I'll be happy to see you. Now, you wait right here, Michael, so I can home. You. No, no, I have forgotten the club luncheon and the mayor coming to talk. Look, I won't be able to make it today. Well, it's just one of those days. Yes, I know we women have got to keep up with the world, widen our horizons. But all the horizons I'll have time for today.
This is a Conrad radio alert. Listen carefully. This station is now leaving the air. Tune your standard radio receiver to 640 or 1240 kilocycles for official civil defense instructions and news. Once again. Your attention, please. Your attention, please. This is your official civil defense broadcaster. An explosion has just taken place in New York City, which is believed to have resulted from the dropping of a hydrogen bomb. The bomb was probably carried by a guided missile launched from a submarine at sea. All civil defense workers report to emergency stations immediately. Children! Stay where you are unless you're in immediate danger. Do not attempt to join your children if they're in school. They are being well taken care of where they are. Do not try to telephone. Remember, radioactivity may make food and water in open containers dangerous. Use canned or otherwise protected foods until further notice. Do not attempt to inquire about relatives in New York, as yet there is no information. Your attention, please. Your attention, please. This station is your only source of official information and civil defense instruction. We repeat, approximately 40 minutes ago at 10.50 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, an explosion, now believed to have been caused by a hydrogen warhead carried by a guided missile, took place over metropolitan New York. First reports indicate extensive damage and heavy loss of life. Almost simultaneously with the strike at New York, other bombs fell on Washington, Philadelphia, Boston, San Francisco, Seattle, and Los Angeles. We have no further details as yet. Our civil defense forces are fully mobilized to cope with the damage and protect our civilian population. In many areas, telephone, gas, and electric services have been cut off or will be disconnected in order to conserve fuel. In order to keep constantly informed, use your battery-operated portable or automobile radios. Keep your set tuned to this same spot on the dial for all authentic civil defense instructions, news, and information. This is your official civil defense broadcast. Come back. But I wonder what's all those sirens go by. <laughs> 
Auxiliary police, probably. There are looters around already. Tell me, what about Barbara? I think she may have been exposed to radiation today. Think? Well, was she or wasn't she? I was bringing my class back from a trip to the aircraft plant when the bomb fell. As we reached the school, it began to rain. Rain that may have been radioactive. May have. Was it or wasn't it? I'm not sure, but to be on the safe side, you should have a test made of Barbara as soon as possible. What sort of a test? With a Geiger counter. But I, I don't follow you. If the radio particles have entered, they go to the bone marrow, causing a drop in the blood count. Now, but that won't come until later. Right now, a Geiger counter is the only thing that'll give us any indication. Uh, now, I'm not sure about this, but just as a preventative, I thought I should see the parents of well, all the uh, students who were with me. But wait a minute. Just a second. Would you wait here, please? Of course. Mother? Father, do you know a Dr. Lee? Dr. Lee? Well, sure, he's my science teacher. Why, is he going around making tests or something? Should he? Well, Chief of Docs, he knows everything in the world about Adams. He worked on that stuff a long way back. He did? Only when they started making the bombs, he decided to give it up and teach high school. He did? Well, what did he do that for? Well, what I... Why is he here? Oh, just a check. What kind of a check? To be sure that all the children that are on the field trip are all right. But what? Is he still here? Look, Barbara, I assure you. Don't leave. Hello, Barbara. The stuff is so... Is it very bad? But I only came to be on the safe side. But from that kind of exposure, people could die, couldn't they? But we're not sure but that you were exposed. The blood comes no, off, Barbara. It's about two weeks, the other symptoms start showing hair falling out, bleeding gums, not Barbara. Did you have to come here and stir us up with thoughts like this? Uh, just a moment, please. If that's your air raid warden, you, you will uh, tell him that you want to test me to Barbara, but please let it be your own idea. Why? because I have my own very good reasons. All right. Oh, Jim Turner from the gas station. Get a new line of work right now, Mrs. Mitchell. I'm your block ward. Now, here is a full set of instructions for your family. Thank you. Vital facts for civilians. Facts of radiation, community organization. You think of everything. <laughs> well, we trained for it long enough. Civil defense. Some folks thought it was a kid's game. You know, lots of laughs. Just a game. Some game. Some laughs. Well, now, is there anything special you'd like to know? A million things. Where my husband is. When I'll ever hear about him. Or from him. Dead or alive. And how long this thing goes on. And Barbara. Whether Barbara... What about Barbara? Well, there's a chance she might have been exposed to radiation. Should she be tested? Well, now, they've just opened a new emergency hospital down the street in the Legion Hall. Take her out in the street? Oh, they think it'll be perfectly safe by tomorrow. By tomorrow? Wait until... No, wait, I'm... wait. I'll tell you what. Young Doc Spinelli, I know that he's standing by right now waiting for the first wounded from New York. I think I can grab him for a minute. I can't tell you how thankful I am. That's my job, Mrs. Mitchell. That's what I signed for. Who'd ever thought of all the times that I drove up to your gas station? <laughs> Regular, ma'am, or high test? Let's face it, Mrs. Mitchell, we won't know what regular is again for a long, long time to come. The wet flickering there. No, 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 it's hardly stirring at all. Just picking up the tiny bit of radioactivity that you picked up from the school door going to the bus and from the bus into here. I doesn't even show one... One milli wrench of radioactivity on me. Right. It would have to show at least two and a half or three milli wrenches to be worth thinking about. Correct, Professor Mitchell. I have the honor to report that you are a very well informed, 100% red blooded American girl. Doctor, is Barbara all right? Yes, ma'am. She's as right as. 
Oh, no. No, the times have done something to rain. Would you test Jenny, too? Oh, sure. How are you, Jenny? Here. No! No, I don't want it! 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 One trace of the hot stuff. She's <laughs> cool as a cucumber. <laughs> and so, as night falls, only flame is to be seen where once stood the dozen great cities. But our will to fight remains unbroken, and already we have taken the offensive to pay the enemy back in his own terms. Keep tuned for further reports later. Barbara. Yes? That teacher of yours. Doc May? Yes, by the time I got back to the kitchen, he'd left. He seemed so strange, for instance, the way he didn't want me to mention his name. Oh, can't you guess why? No, not for the life of me. He thinks he might be on a list of wanted persons. Heavenly day, what for? Well, for refusing to have anything to do with war, with making the bombs. But he hates the enemy just as much as any of us. It's just that he's very religious and he's against shedding blood. A pacifist? But there are some people, he says, who won't see the difference. Don't have time for explanation. Shooting again. So Those people scooting through the streets, they might take him for a looter. Someone might decide to shoot first and ask questions later. Jenny. Oh, where's Jenny? Jenny, she was looking for that toy horse of her. Jenny! Jenny, where are you? Jenny! your teeth just now. Sure you weren't being sick? Oh, don't be a worry, Ward. You hardly ate me supper. Barbara, were you sick? That doesn't mean it has to do with radiation poisoning. Oh. Here, look at the instructions here. They say, nausea and vomiting made me emotional or from some other cause, and without evidence shouldn't be taken too seriously unless it recurs in a week or two. So stop looking at me as if I was doomed. I bet a lot of people don't feel so good tonight. No, I guess not. Ladies and gentlemen, stand by for an important address. We bring you now the nationally famous news analyst, John Daly, with a message of hope and inspiration. Mr. Daly. This is the report on today's bomb attack. I will not try to gloss over the happenings of these past few hours. We have been mauled badly by an enemy who hoped to destroy us with a single blow. In this, he has not succeeded. Throughout the nation tonight, we are working according to a long-prepared blueprint to carry out the two imperative tasks of the hour. These tasks are, one, to care for the wounded and the homeless. Two, to carry the war to the I hope we didn't wait for Mrs. Mitchell. Carry out the war. They're from New York and Lower Westchester. They, they were driven out of their home. We found them hundreds of thousands while they're in these cross counties that are shell. We're back by the village. Well, we here mark these four people, Mrs. Mitchell, that we put up in your house. Yes, of course, I don't want On the fighting front. I don't want to die. The radiation. The fire. There have been no further enemy attempts to break through our defense screen. 
and the war has been carried to every single major city in the enemy's homeland. Here at home, order has begun to emerge from the chaos with a rapidity never believed possible. The homeless and injured are being cared for. Limited telephone service is being restored at a rapid rate. Civil defense welfare services have already established clearing houses and have begun to compile casualty lists for those seeking missing friends and relatives. That is all for now. Daddy, Daddy! I don't want to think about that. I want to think that he's safe and well, do you hear? Yes, Mother. Oh, there goes that poor kid again, Nancy. What's the matter with Mrs. Harvey lying in bed all day looking at the wall? She's convinced that her husband's dead, and so is she pretty near. She just doesn't care. And that other prize, Mrs. Moore. Thank heaven for Mr. Flood at least. Yes, he's sweet. He seems he used to go to sea first mate on a lot of ships. Good morning, Libby. Good morning. Hi, I said. Well. I hope you have you all your stores laid in. I'll go get them for you. Bobby Jim. and I were up the first thing this morning. Laid in for the week, Skipper. I found these up in the attic. I thought you might be able to use them. Oh, I thought we'd thrown those out years well, ago. They're in ship shape now, lady. Thank you, Mr. Flood. It's good to have you aboard. Will you put them on the mantel? Yes. Mrs. Mitchell. Yes. Is there any ice yet in that refrigerator? No, the electricity hasn't been on long. Oh, my throat aches so. <laughs> <laughs> Kill Billy music. <laughs> Is that all I can give him? Why don't you write to your senator and what's left of him? Oh, I mean, they, they never tell us anything, do anything. No, no, but they let gangs of hoodlums go roaming all over the landscape. Gangs? What gangs? I, I see them from the window. Crazy men wandering around, breaking into houses, and <laughs> we're left here to die little by little. Oh, Mrs. Moore. <laughs> oh, yes. That's all a great big joke, isn't it? And meanwhile, my bones are burning away inside of me. And... Oh, pretty soon my, my, my hair will all start falling out. <laughs> Nobody believes me. I'll tell you this, I'd never sign up to be cast away on a desert island with that one. And that other one in there, Mrs. Harvey, going down just like a ship in the sea. We can all take a lesson from you. I mean, the way you keep going on, always well, looking around for what's to be done next. I'll give you this, that never have such big holes been knocked in the world as in these last few days. And there are those who say that there'll be no more tomorrows. Well, they're in for a big surprise. Because tomorrow does come. Maybe it limps a little, maybe it crawls, but it does come. Question is, what do you want to be on board or just get left behind? Are you going out? Yes, I think it's safe enough now. I told the eight hands bad down at the rescue center. Uh, see you later, lady. Bye, Skipper. You know, Mother, even if the whole world was blown up, you find that just let out there the next morning with a hammer and nail. Oh, we've got to do something. Mrs. Harvey, oh. you know you haven't washed that child's face since you got here? Oh, my husband. Dad. How can you know? In New York when it happened. Dad. Oh, stop it. Think for once of your child. All right, if you won't. Nancy. Come on, let's wash your face and get this something to me. Come on. Oh, please, dear. Wait, it's all so hopeful. I wasn't a babysitter for nothing. Come on in here, Jenny. Be careful. <laughs> My best is a dress. Look at me, everybody. Isn't this scrumptious, Nancy? I'm going to a nightclub. Wouldn't you like to go? Dress me up, too. Dress me up, too, please. <laughs> Come on, Nancy. I'll take you on. Thank you, Bobby. Listen, from now on, I'll take care of the children. Ladies and gentlemen, in a moment you may hear an alert in your area. Do not be alarmed. Our patrols are merely checking on a plane that has failed to identify itself properly. Oh, ye gods and little fishes, what happened? 
happening now? All right, Mrs. Moore. All oh, right, that awful racket. Just checking on a plane. Oh, noise. Always oh, noise. Yes, Mrs. Moore. Next time, we'll all have to pitch in and fight a quiet war. Yes, Just routine alert. No, what bothers me, I... I just looked out of the window, and what I saw was some awful-looking men going across the back lawn to the kitchen door. Perhaps civil defense. Not those. I don't think my coat is just like behind. It's not back yet. of our universe, of matter, what held it together or drove it apart, pure speculation. I worked with a pencil, scraps of paper, and my thoughts. Now how, I reasoned, could that bring harm to even the smallest of God's creatures? And then I learned that my every thought was being turned to... To atomic theory? To the creation of the most destructive weapons the world has ever known. But I'd been raised on certain principles among those... Thou shalt not kill. Not ever, not under any circumstances. And then I learned every thought was being turned to me to destruction. As soon as I found that out, I gave up my work and I turned to teaching. I see. But, Mother, if he truly, honestly believes in pacifism, I'm sure, and so wouldn't I like to. But all it takes is one hoodlum running wild in the streets, and what are we supposed to do? I've heard that argument before. But I'd always hoped that there'd be enough men of goodwill on all sides that they could get together in decency and reason. Fine. But we three stood here just a moment ago with the best will in the world. And then suddenly three men came in. But why did it have to happen? Why did I have to use this gun? Yes, why? But that's the way it did happen. And I'm only thankful that you took that gun in your hands and fired it. Otherwise, Those awful men. I still say I deplore it. Isn't that a luxury? That kind of sentimentality? Where would we all be if we decided to think that way? Mother, you're not going to say anything about that thing. Oh, Father. Well, anybody could sit for us, please, Mother. Mother. Please. Oh, Jim Turner, thank heaven. We heard a shotgun going off, then we nabbed a couple of hooligans trying to run away. Yes, from here, my husband's bird gun. You? Well, the fact is... Well, that... Annie Oakley, my hat's off to you. Well, you see, I... Yes? Thank you. Thank you for stopping by. Good night. Good night. I mean, good hunting. Mother? No, I didn't mention him. You, you mean he can stay? Come on in here, Dr. Lee. No, I don't want to do anything that would cause your mother embarrassment. It's done now, Dr. Lee. Oh, no, from now on, no more Dr. Lee. Well, all those people here will have to give you a new name. What? From now on, you're Mr. Wallace, an old friend of Dad. Gary Wallace, oh, practically a member dear. of the family. Gary, meet Gladys. Gladys, meet Gary. Well. well. <laughs> Dying. I have a perfect right to die. I'm not dying. I've had enough. And you, lying 
there all day like a stone. But my husband, don't you think I have a husband too, a hat? Don't you think I have to think of the sickness of whether I might get to my children? But I don't mind it. Just the frightened as either of you. You have to keep reminding me how frightened I am. It's enough to have them say strangers into my home, but you too, the way you go on over and over again. Listen, I don't like it any more than you I'm do. I'm sorry. Can... I'll try to do better. Oh, I didn't mean to fly off the handle. So... They said it might start working again. The first time. Hello. Yes, this is Mrs. Mitchell speaking. Trying to find a way of reaching me all week. Yes, go ahead, let's have it. Thank you. Thank you so much for your trouble. She was home. Say, yes, go on. Father phoned from the office during the morning. There were a few things he had to and know. Tell me. We were talking together. And the bump? The bump fell? Suddenly there wasn't anything anymore on the other end no. of the line. No. The office? Not the city. But nothing. If there's anything I can do. But the... gentleman out there with her. Mr. Wallace? Yes, he's done wonders. You might say he's pulled her right back from the grave. The way the news came to her. Oh, that awful way. Everything went so black before me. I, I couldn't see anything anymore. I wasn't even sure I was alive. But after a while, I did begin to hear. Hear what? Voices all around. So filled with concern. The children, old Mr. Flood, and you. Well, naturally, we were concerned. Naturally. Don't talk as if it were nothing. It's everything. Especially now when so much has been bombed out of the world. I'm concerned to know that somebody cares what's happening. I guess that's what Mrs. Moore is always after, poor thing. I am sorry for her. For almost everyone, aren't you? I'm not a weeping walrus, but I realize there is a great deal of sorrow in the world. Unfortunately, some of it I help to make. You never were meant for pure science. Well, I know some men who can see everything as particles in one form or another. But there was always something wrong with my equation. Something quite unscientific. Those human factors. 
Those particles that we call a heart. So wild and unmanageable. Made you do strange things? Run out in the street to warn your students they might be sick? Well, wouldn't anybody? No, not anyone. And it made you take a gun in your hand? Yes, and I fired it. But no one was hit. But the next time I fired, I would have shot to kill. It wasn't a thing you would have done for yourself, only for others. You think so? I know this much now, that we'll oftentimes do things for others that we'd never dream of doing for ourselves. And I got that awful news four days ago. Now, Mrs. Mitchell. I didn't want anything for myself except not to be anymore. I can understand that. But after a while, I heard voices. Your children, naturally. I'll all, always be thankful to you. I'm the one to be thankful for the shelter you've given me. It's you who gave us the shelter. Tell me, has anyone been feeding you these past few days? Mrs. Harvey pulled herself together, and Barbara has pitched in just magnificently. Well, back to the kitchen. It's about Mrs. Moore. What about Mrs. Moore? I just saw her packing her things, getting ready to leave us, I guess. Did she say anything? Nothing, not a word. Oh, I guess yes. to her. Mrs. Moore, you're leaving us? Yes. Yes, I... I haven't been a very good guest, I realize that. So on that account, we've all had our attack of nerves. Yes. Well, this morning, the block warden ordered me down the street to that hospital for a blood count. What happened? Nobody would believe me. I, I tried to tell you all, but nobody would believe me. Mrs. Moore, you really are sick. Yes, I've been sick all along. Quite sick. Yes, Mr. Tim. If you're ready to leave now, we'll take you over to White Plains Hospital. It's one of the best in the country. They'll have everything you need. Oh, Just don't let yourself get upset, Mrs. Moore. I don't think we have to worry about how Mrs. Moore's taking it. You know, it's, it's such a strange feeling, knowing for sure. I, I don't know, I don't know how it makes it easier all of a sudden. Easier? Yes. Yes, the other way, not really knowing. I, you just don't know how to be or what to be, but once it's decided for you, what way is there to be? Think of all the harsh words. Oh, that... no. Please, please. Thank you. Thank you very much for putting me up. Putting up with me. Goodbye. She's probably going to die, isn't she? Thank you. You could do with some brushing yourself. Ow! That hurts! Hold still! <laughs> well? Mother! Jenny, have you been feeling all right these past few days? Sure. You ate your lunch all right? <laughs> Jenny, what is it? Tell me, I've got to know. I, I didn't feel like eating. I threw it away. Why didn't you tell me you couldn't eat? I, I thought you'd be mad at me. Mad? Yes. You see, I found a big box of candy in the refrigerator yesterday. Well, I, I ate it all up by myself. 
That's why I guess I don't feel so good. Jimmy, Jimmy, you are mad. No, 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 I'm not. Darling, come on. You lie down for a little while. Barbara! Barbara! Yes, Dr. Lee is around. I think he just went downstairs for a little rest. Rest? I don't think he's feeling too well. Oh. We'll ask him if he would come up at once. Sure. Please. What did you study? Why do you want my blood? I'm going to study it, Jenny. Why? Because blood is very interesting. Now, come on, lie down. There you are. Yes. I won't waste a minute. I'll have to check this count downstairs. Radiation. I'm afraid. How on earth could Jenny have ever been exposed? Well, the test a week ago showed negative. We kept her indoors all the while we're safe. I don't know how it happened, but the best thing to do is notify the block warden at once. I'll go get him. Yes, please. It should be enough to tell him about the, the, the hair falling out of the nose, isn't it? I don't understand. I tell him about the blood count of water, know how we got it. The other stuff should be enough to go on, shouldn't it? Yes, yes, go ahead. Congratulations, Jenny. Not one peep out of you. Well, I'm used to it. And that other man who stabbed me this morning. What other man? Oh, uh, Mr. Wallace said something. Mr. Wallace? Uh-huh. Well, Mrs. Mitchell, uh, we'd better get her to the hospital. But what I'd very much like to have... Yes? ...is the results of that other blood count this morning. Other? I gather from Jenny that there was one. Well, you see... First of all, Mrs. Mitchell, any man who was equipped to be taking blood counts should not be roaming around on his own. Well, I... So what concerns me more is the score of that other count. Matched with a new one, it'll give me more of an exact idea of what's happening to Jenny. Guide us in her course of treatment. Well, I so, assure you. All right. I mean. Oh, Dr. Lee. Oh, stop. Dr. Lee. Are you Garson Lee? Here's the blood count. Thank you. That's all you'll need it. Garson Lee. Say, just a minute. You're one down in Hitchcock. Run, Dr. Run. How must you? What? Oh, no, wait a minute, everybody. You're barking up a wrong tree. You see, the reason they want you down at headquarters, Doc. I can guess. Is to set up a research project at once. Research? Yes, on radiation exposure and how to deal with it. Why, his brains are a national asset, you might say, especially right now. Research? I've already set up that project with myself as my own walking laboratory, my own guinea pig. You? You're sick too? I've known it for several days. I've been taking my own blood count. Why on earth didn't you try to get treatment? I was afraid to show myself. Well, that was my mistake. How sick, tell me. Well, now that I can get adequate treatment, who knows? Yeah. I don't like the hospital. What did you do with Michael? Michael, you mean your little rag horse? He's not a rag. We took him in. We just took him to feed him some oats. Now, don't you worry. Nurse. Yes, sir. She, uh, she's going to need a long course of treatment. In plain English, she took in a lot of the particles resulting from the fog. They're still in her bone marrow, and until they burn themselves out, yes. they destroy the bone marrow and stop the production of blood cells, causing anemia. Isn't there anything you can do, really do? Well, radiation sickness can be treated like any other. I want to stay in bed! Peter, come back here! I hate you! Hey, whoa! Bed. Slow down there, cowpoke! Sorry, Doctor. Here, they're fixing up a fine new television set in the children's ward. Now you come along. Yeah, you go watch that TV. I want to Those sores, those boils. Can you gonna look that way? Well, they're the same as any other boil, Mrs. Mitchell. They just come because the body's resistance gets low and it can't fight off the bugs. Think of Jenny. They're only important if they're not kept clean. Antibiotics help and other things. I don't want to be here! Jenny, she's never been away from us for one night. I know. Kids are the worst problem. They lose their bandages. They don't lie still. Could she possibly be treated at home? Could she? Well, there are going to be lots of injections right around the clock, Mrs. Mitchell. Well, I was a nurse's aide once in some war or other. And also, I worked at the Red Cross blood bank. Yes, but just you alone. It's... And Barbara. Well, kids are inclined to be squeamish, especially where blood is concerned. Kids? Not Barbara. Not the way she's grown up this past week. Mommy, where are you? I'm 
frightened. Oh, I guess that settles it. Just a minute, dearest. Tell me, how on earth could Ginny have ever gotten it? Well, uh, you know that little uh, rag horse that she totes around, that toy? Could that have been left out on the porch during the radioactive rain and gotten soaked? Michael, of course, and she's been kissing and hugging it ever since. I put a Geiger counter on Michael. He's still hot. He's a one-man bomb. A Trojan horse now, home. Isn't anything safe anymore? And so, as of today, the various utilities will be restored to fuller use in various communities throughout this area. That is all. Well, you might say life is flaming higher once again. Uh, like for Mrs. Harvey. Isn't it wonderful about her? Yeah. Why can't I have Michael back? Darling, go on out in the breakfast room. Get ready for your first Mother, injection. I want Michael. Look here, young lady. For you, with the compliments of the first mate. He made it all by himself. Why can't I have Michael back? Yeah, yeah. Run along, dear. Mother, what did the hospital say? The instructions. Jenny's going to need treatment for months and months. Is it that serious? Well, I'll get that hot water going for the instant. Find something we can use for dressing, something we can tear up. Mrs. Mitchell? Yes. I suppose Barbara's told you my news. News? My husband. He located us through the welfare organization. Alive and well. How wonderful. He was on the road when the bomb fell. A hundred miles from New York. Oh, I'm so glad for you. So very glad. Oh, I shouldn't be acting so overjoyed considering what's happened to you. Don't apologize for your good luck. Enjoy it. Bye. This is official, a bulletin from General Headquarters. It is reported that our planes are now able to fly over enemy territory almost at will. It is expected that we will soon land ground forces at a number of enemy beaches. I repeat, the enemy's will and ability to fight have now virtually been broken. That is all for the present. Remember these bright jackets I used to use for babysitting? Tell sure come in handy now. Thank you, Barbara. Of the four of us who ate breakfast together in this house just ten days ago, one will never be back. And another... Mommy? Yes, Jimmy. Are we winning? Are we? I asked you. Are we winning, Mommy? Not yet, darling. But we're going to. I promise you that, Ginny dear. We are going to win. I'm so glad you thank the New York State Council, the City Civil Defense Office, and National Civil Defense Headquarters in Washington for their kindness in providing technical information and advice throughout the presentation of tonight's show, Atomic Attack.